March of 2020, many aspects of our life have been dictated by the coronavirus. I believe that in our football stadium, which holds 5,400 fans, that we're very disrespectful and um, disconcerting. Up, uh, graduation being one of those, and what we would hate. We have a bus driver shortage anyway, and so we're constantly trying to hire bus drivers. And so if you have a mask up, sleeve up. We I've got an awesome idea. I could do my own TV show. Oh my gosh, how have I not thought of this before? It's the, oh, Gary. Hey, Gary. Gary. Gary, Gary, Gary. Oh, Gary, Gary. Gary. Oh. I have got the great, the greatest idea. I've got the greatest idea I've ever had. You are going to love this. All right, go with me now, okay? So, you know, this summer, I've really not been on the news a whole lot. And, you know, with the new school, it's already, already broken ground and things are moving in that direction. I may not be on TV a lot in the very near future. But what if, what if we created my own TV show, KP TV? Think about it. Think about all the awesome stories that we could do if I had my own show. So what do you think? I think that we need to focus on the division. Maybe not as much about you, but we can spread oh, the love. No, wait, listen. People are going to love Jennifer, Jennifer, come here, check us out. You're going to love this. I've got a new idea. It's going to be awesome. Think about it now. Envision. K P T V. We can do all kinds of new stories about the things that I like to do around here at the office. People in the division, all over the city, maybe the state and nation, they're going to love this. You can't be kidding. No, 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 no. I don't mind to do it at all. It's really not that big a deal. I really don't mind. I really don't mind at all. I'm just not sure about this idea. Uh, Jennifer, we can make it work. Gary, I'm telling you, this is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Hey, Dr. Duncan, come here, come here, come here. Listen, I want to, I want to bounce an idea off of you that Gary and I have come up with together. Sure, boss. What do you think about this? KPTV. A TV show that's all about me, I mean, all about us and the division and, and the things that I do, I mean, that we do here. What do you think? Is it all about you? Well, a lot of it will be, yes. Awesome, I think it's a great idea. See, I told I you, it's, I mean, this people is are going to it. It's going to be all great. Yes, all right. Thank yes. you. Yes. Hey, thank great you. Great idea. Right. Thank you. See you. You betcha. You know, Tim, this KPTV idea, I think it's really going to be a hit. Oh, I do too. It's going to be great, boss. I mean, you know, it could be as big as 2020, oh, Dateline. Absolutely. I think it'll be even bigger. Actually it, bigger. Know, it could be as big as The Office. Oh, I agree. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. You know, what do you think about that gray? Oh, the gray's... Leave the gray, boss. It just looks great, really debonair, really super smart. Leave it. I think you're right. Oh, well, absolutely. I think you're right. This is Keith Perigen. Keith Perigen. KPTV. Signing off. Luke, I am your father. I've got a favor to ask. I'll be back. Stop! No! Adrian! Did I do that? Good morning, I'm Keith Perigen, Superintendent of Bristol, Virginia Public Schools. Welcome to the first newscast of KPTV, coming to you live from downtown Bristol, Virginia. So the first story that we're going to do on KPTV is a story about me and my background. I think it's important for you to understand where I come from so that you can better understand me as a leader. I've been married to my wonderful wife, Amy, for 26 years, and we have two great children. Alexis is our oldest, 
and our son Isaac is our youngest. Isaac's also married to a girl named Lexi. So we have four wonderful grandchildren. Brayton and Macy, they go to Van Pelt Elementary School. Paxton will be attending our three-year program and Jagger. Before long, we'll have our fifth grandchild who will be named Milo. This past summer, Paxton was with his mom and they were outside in the yard catching lightning bugs. And Paxton was having the best time catching lightning bugs. But his mom told him it was time to go in. Well, Paxton didn't want to go in. He told his mom he wanted to stay out and catch some more lightning bugs. And she said, Paxton, you've already caught all kinds of lightning bugs. It's time to go in. But he said, no, Mommy, I want to catch more lightning bugs. And she said, oh my goodness, Paxton, how many lightning bugs do you want to catch? And Paxton, in his little sweet way, said, I want to catch all the lightning bugs. We're thrilled to have with us today on KPTV, Angel Hudson. She's Program Director for Human Resources at Bristol Virginia Public Schools. Angel, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. Tell us about some of the exciting things that occurred in your department last year. Well, we have worked diligently to retain and recruit the best possible staff and teachers. Um, for school year 2023, we gave a significant pay increase, so we're very proud of that. Um, in addition, we were able to recognize over 15 of our staff, and we did that from peers, um, outside community members, and um, parents. So that was a real um, exciting event that happened monthly for our staff. Um, also this year, all of our support staff are making a minimum of $15 an hour, so we're proud of that as well. Angel, that is truly phenomenal. You know, yes. Bristol Virginia Public Schools, we have the best employees of anywhere around, and now we're paying them as well as anybody around too. So I know that you've got to be excited about that yes. because I certainly am. Absolutely. Angel, thanks for being with us today. Happy to. Thank you. Our next guest here on KPTV is Dr. Megan Denabriga. Megan is the Director of Special Education Services for Bristol Virginia Public Schools. Megan, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Listen, we're so glad that you're here to talk about the important work that you do. Tell us what you're excited about that occurred last year in your department. Well, last year we met all our compliance uh, requirements, which of course in special education is a huge deal. So our department was very proud of the fact that we didn't miss any of our timelines, for, you know, regardless of everything going on. Um, also very excited that we got some extra help at Van Pelt with Mr. Josh Blackburn, mm -hmm. who uh, is supporting our special education services there, and he's doing um, a superb job. And lastly, we are really excited about in improving and increasing our inclusion practices, and we look for that to just get even better and better. Awesome. Well, Megan, thank you for your leadership in that department. And as a former special education teacher, I know just how hard that job is. And so it doesn't go unnoticed the good work that you and your staff are doing, especially our teachers out in our schools. Absolutely. So, thank no, you for being great. here with us today. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, it's time to head over to Transit to learn more about our facilities and logistics programs. Good morning, I'm Megan Denoprega with KPTV and I'm here on site at Bristol Virginia Public Schools Transit with the Director of Facilities and Logistics, Mr. Bill Buckles. Good morning, Megan. So Mr. Buckles, will you share with us what you are most proud of accomplishments from last year? Uh, yes, sure will. We, uh, of course, over here we have three teams, our maintenance team and transportation team and custodial team. Our maintenance team completed 688 work orders during the 21-22 school year. Uh, we've also completed $1,276,000 worth of capital projects with another $847,000 still in progress at this point. Uh, transportation, we uh, have transported approximately 900 students daily to and from school in 21-22. They logged 186,783 miles, all which is safe, no accidents, no injuries, which is great. And we've also added four new buses, including three new activity buses uh, that we've added to the fleet this year. Our custodial team is wrapping up another summer of deep cleaning. It's been uh, challenging with the construction we've had at Virginia Middle and Virginia High School. Uh, we've hired 
five new employees for the custodial department and plan on excelling this upcoming school year. Wow, that is so impressive. Well, we thank you for all your hard work because the school division definitely could not run without your departments. Thank you. Thank you. This is Megan Denobrega with KPTV. Back to you in the studio. So, Bill, I heard you have a really nice new activity bus. Oh, we do, Megan. I mean, this bus is the latest and greatest. We've got a wrap, all these coach seats. I mean, it's top of the line. Well, I don't know if you've heard, but Dr. Perigen is starting his own new show, and he really wants me to get that bus so that he can transport his reporters around. Excuse me, new show? What 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 are you talking about? Yeah, he's doing KPTV. He's doing he's doing his own new show, and he really wants that bus. No, we we we, we just can't do that. That's that's not policy. Hey, Megan, no! John, stop her! That's what Mama always said. If you build it, they will come. You know, Tim, I think this show is going to be a huge hit. I mean, I can't wait to see how many fans we have. Absolutely, it's going to be huge. It's going to be big. Absolutely. Just one minute, boss. Hello. Yes. KP. Oh, no. TV. That's right. Okay, I'll let him know. Thanks Perigen. a lot. Bye-bye. Hey, Dr. Perigen, we got a problem. Did you let the Fenskins know that we're going to be shooting today? Oh my gosh, I was supposed to send the email, but I got stuck on Twitter. Understandable, oh understandable. God. Okay, all right, let me send this email to the ones we've not been to. But in the meantime, this is gonna be big. I think, I really think we need to start a fan club. Could you start working on that? Absolutely, that's a great idea. I'm on it, boss, I'm all on right. it right now. All right, let's go. Okay, Good I'm job. there. All right, thank you. Yes, yes. And now, to hear more about Virginia Middle School, we have Megan DeNabriga on scene. Mr. Matlock, where have you been? Did you not get the email? Well, I mean, you know Dr. Perigen sends so many emails that uh, it's hard to tell, you know, when I really need to read one, but I, I did read it and I was in, I was, I was really hoping to beat you guys back. Have you been at the golf course all morning? I mean, you're supposed to be at school. Uh, no comment, no comment. Good morning, I'm Megan Denabriga from KPTV and I'm here on site at Virginia Middle School with Principal Mr. Jason Matlock. And Mr. Matlock, we're here this morning. We'd love to hear from you some of your things that you're most proud of from last school year. Sure, so there's several things that I'm most proud of uh, at Virginia Middle School. Uh, first and foremost, just the perseverance that our students and staff showed. You know, last year was very difficult. There was a lot of uncertainties coming into the beginning of the year and a lot of changes throughout the year with uh, masks and spacing and, and everything. And everyone just did an outstanding job of uh, focusing on, on what we needed to do to, uh, to accomplish our goals. And in terms of accomplishing our goals, a lot of students showed tremendous growth uh, on their SOLs. Uh, we had uh, a record year for uh, parent engagement. We had a number of parent engagement um, activities and, and parent nights and um, you know overall just a lot of excitement and a lot of great things taking place here at Virginia Middle School last year and very excited about uh, continuing those things on into this year. Absolutely and, and I know that your staff and you all have worked so hard and we just commend you for all that you've done. Thanks so much. Thank you. So you know Bristol Virginia Public Schools wouldn't run nearly as effectively without Assistant Superintendent Gary Ritchie. We're thrilled to have Gary Ritchie today as a guest on KPTV. Gary, welcome. Good morning. All right. So Gary, I know that you have your hands in a lot of different things uh, all across the school division. Tell us just a couple of things that you're really excited about that happened last school year. Well, first of all, um, I'm very proud of the test scores. Um, certainly being behind, uh, having a lot of room to make up and our scores came through and very proud of that. And I'm also proud of the fact that our school division was recognized by the Department of Education as a school division of innovation. 
Yeah, that was a huge honor. I think only five other school divisions across the Commonwealth, and there's 132 school divisions, and only five were recognized with that award. Yeah, and, it, and we got started last year, and I think we're only going to see better things to come from it. Well, Gary, I know everybody appreciates all the work that you do and the fact that you keep me out of trouble. I know I greatly appreciate that. Thanks for being on our show today. Thank you. Heading over to Washington Lee to learn what's going on with Faith Mabe. Dr. Mabe, what are you doing? Didn't you get the email from Dr. Perigen about the interview? You're here for what? I'm here to interview you for KPTV. Who thought that was a good idea? Oh, I have got so many things to do that he gave us at the principal's meeting. And you want to do an interview? I've got pages of stuff to do. And this is all about focusing on Spotlight. Oh, I mean, Dr. Perigen, are you filming this? Good morning, this is Megan Denoberga from KPTV Live at Washington Lee Elementary with the principal, Dr. Faith Mabe. Dr. Mabe, we'd love to hear from you about the accomplishments from last year that you are most, most proud of from your school. I'm the most proud that my folks showed up. It had to be the most difficult teaching year of their lives. They showed up physically, they showed up to provide comfort, care, and handle the curriculum. I call my families every summer and check and see how their year went the last year to get their feedback. Let me just share a few with you. I'd love to hear it. We love being at Washington Lee. We have never been so cared for. Our teacher was awesome. She took care of our child's every need. We've been thrilled with Washington Lee. We are thrilled that you go the extra mile for our kids. My child has never been so happy as he is at Washington Lee. He loves school as much as a kid could possibly love school. He loves his teachers, the staff, and his friends. This goes on and on. Well, the proof is right there. And I know your teachers have worked hard and you were very successful and nothing tells the truth more than the words of our families. So thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Oh, by the way, would you please pass on to Dr. Perigen that the principals are refusing his idea of us getting matching KP tattoos. I'm marking that off my list right now. I'll let him know. And this is Megan Denoberga with KPTV. Back to you in the studio. Well, I will tell you, um, if this show takes off like I think it will, everybody will be lined up to get a new KP tattoo. Bristol Virginia Public Schools is blessed to have Jennifer Hurt as our Director of Federal Programs and Pre-K. Jennifer is here with us today. Jennifer, thanks for being here. Thank you. Jennifer, tell us about the exciting things that happened in your department last year. So with the unfortunate pandemic that came to us, brought a lot more money into federal programs, $10 million compared to the normal two and a half million we normally deal with in federal programs. Mm -hmm. The good part about the money is we were able to put money into the pockets of all of our staff, from nurses to bus drivers to clerical staff, and most importantly to our teachers. We are thrilled to be able to put money in people's pockets. Mm -hmm. That truly means a lot. Also, the pandemic created a crisis with child care. And one of the exciting things about a new initiative that we have in Bristol, Virginia schools is a program at the Virginia High School called the Bearcat Paws Early Childhood Learning Center. We are thrilled to be able to open up a program for three-year-olds. Um, it is a crisis when our families can't come to work, when other families can't go to work. It creates a lot of issues for many of us. We're excited about starting this program, look forward to serving children in our community, as well as our staff's children throughout the future. Jennifer, I think that sums up Bristol Virginia Public Schools in just one little blurb there. Number one, we take care of our staff, and that is always a focus and a priority. And we're also meeting a need in our community. So we're, I know you're thrilled about this new innovative program that we're going to have, and we appreciate your leadership to make it happen. Sure. Thank you. Across town at Virginia High School, Gary Ritchie is now on scene to learn more about what's going on at our high school. Hey, Ronnie, I've been looking for you everywhere. What's going on? Nothing. I've just been out here catching some rays, trying not to fade. I just got back from the beach. 
Didn't you get to the email from Dr. Perrigan about the interview? No, no, no. Was was it an important one? They're all important, you know. Well, we do get a lot. That's true. This is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News, and I'm here today at Virginia High School interviewing Ronnie Collins, principal of the school. Mr. Collins, today we are interviewing principals as we are celebrating our successes from last school year. And what is something that you would like to share with everyone in which you are most proud of your school? I think it would be our community, our school community's response to the fentanyl problem and the drugs that we had in our community, how the teachers and the, the students all came together to put on the community fair for everybody in our community. I attended that uh, community fair and it was so awesome and you have much in which to be prepared. Congratulations to you. Thank you. This is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News coming back to you in the studio. So when I was a student, one of my favorite parts of the day was going to lunch. Today we're lucky to have with us Kathy Hicks. She's our Director of School Nutrition Services in Bristol, Virginia Public Schools. Kathy, thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, glad to have you. So Kathy, one of the things that we saw during the pandemic was it was critical that we've got good, hot, fresh meals to our families. Tell us about your success during the pandemic and making sure our children were fed. Um, starting in March of 2020, we uh, not only fed students in our school buildings, but we also delivered meals door to door to families. Um, during that time frame of March 2020 until the end of May 2022, we served over one and a half million mm. breakfast, lunch, and dinners to our students. Kathy, that is phenomenal. When you think that we only have 2,100 students in Bristol, mm -hmm. Virginia Public Schools to have served that many meals in that amount of time is truly miraculous. Yes, the staff worked very hard and diligently and made sure all students were fed. Well, what you and your staff do for our kids, it is truly one of the most important things we do every single day. So thank you for that good work. Thank you. All right. So we have some breaking news here at KPTV. It seems that word has gotten out that there's a new news show that's going to be featuring me and now there's going to be a fan club. I'm not really surprised, but I'm excited to learn more about it. Let's go to Virginia High School to see what's going on. Look, I, I did the best that I could, Dr. Perrigan. I even invited your parents to come, but they were busy. They were dusting their collectible figurines, and well, they couldn't make it. But I, I did the best that I could. I'm, I'm really sorry. This is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News, and I'm here today with Tim Duncan, who is the former program director of student services for Bristol Virginia Public Schools and today Tim we are celebrating successes from this past year and could you tell us from your department what is a great success that you would like to share with everyone? Well student services really I guess the paramount objective for our department is family engagement and addressing students needs that are most at risk and so our partnership with communities and schools to target truancy and student needs as far as food, uh, school supplies and a lot of other needs was we did a really good job with that. It's really important that if we don't address our students needs at the most basic levels then they're not going to be able to succeed academically and behaviorally um, as much as we would like. So, you know, that, that partnership with CIS was really important. Also, to celebrate and enhance student sensitivity and, and, and cultural awareness with all of our students is a really important objective as well. And I feel like we made real big strides with that in our schools. We also formed an equity committee that brought in uh, stakeholders throughout the Bristol community to meet monthly to discuss our needs, the needs of our students from a cultural and racial standpoint. So we're proud of those things. Not only that, there's a lot of things that Bristol Virginia Public Schools has to be proud of. And uh, we do a great job uh, bringing in the community members so that we can work collaboratively to make uh, this place the best that it can be for our students. 
Thanks, Tim. I know that you work really hard and you wear a lot of hats, and congratulations for the success in your department. And this is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News coming back to you in the studio. Our next guest on KPTV is Jeff Shelton. Jeff serves as the Chief Technology Officer for Bristol, Virginia Public Schools. Jeff, we're really glad to have you on the show today. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. All right. So, Jeff, during the pandemic, well, even before the pandemic, technology has become such an important part of what we do as a school system. Tell us what you're proud of from your department last school year. Well, I think we have a few things that we're, we're really proud of. I mean, we, we, uh, the teachers have been under a lot of stress. And so we tried really hard not to implement a lot of new stuff that just put additional stresses on them. So our focus this past year, our motto was kind of don't make changes, just improvements. So we tried really, really hard to do what we do better instead of add a bunch of new stuff. So, I mean, I think we've done a good job. We've gotten better at what we do. Um, the other thing that is um, a really big deal, I think that we did this year was um, implement some STEM programs we hired two emerging technology specialists and um, Chris Michael Raft is at the elementary school and he has taught um, computer programming, robotics, augmented reality, virtual reality, 3D printing, um, really a lot of stuff that kids might not get to experience or at least not experience in a lot in a regular classroom setting. So our hope there is to stimulate kids to uh, have an interest mm -hmm. in, in those things and maybe they can pursue them more further. At the um, high school and middle school, Logan Childress has built two just state-of-the-art fantastic virtual reality labs and we have over 100 applications that are available to students across a whole range of subjects and um, we've already been filtering kids through there last year. We, we, um, we kind of got it done a little bit after Christmas and um, it has really spurred a lot of interest. Uh, we have a ton of school systems outside um, wanting to come see it. And um, I got, I think, making the Washington Post <laughs> did a lot to, yeah, absolutely. to really do that. But um, we're really hoping there to expose kids to experiences, jobs, locations, um, things that they might not have available to them here in Bristol. And um, maybe spur some intellectual curiosity to get them to do something that maybe they didn't even know existed before. Yeah, absolutely. Connecting our kids to 21st century technologies and making sure that they're ready for what waits on them after they graduate is really important. Jeff, what an exciting year for your department. First, you're in the Washington Post, and now you're on KPTV. <laughs> so glad you could be here with us today. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, for a story about one of our schools, we'll head out to Van Pelt, where Jennifer Hurt is on scene. Jared, we're doing an interview today for KPTV. KPTV, is that yes. Samaritan TV I've heard yes. about? I got work to do. Every time I hear a newspaper or see an article of something, it's all about this school project. I got dirt to move. Don't tell me I got missed another email and I got stuff to do for this TV program he's starting. Every time I try to talk to him, it's all about Twitter or TV. I don't have time for this. I got dirt to move. Jared, we need to talk about the accomplishments at Van Pelt Elementary School. Accomplishments. Mr. Rader, I know there's a lot of great things going on at Van Pelt Elementary School. A lot of projects that you're in charge of. Being the principal of our largest elementary school, no doubt that takes a lot of your time. Today, we really want to talk about the accomplishments that we've had at Van Pelt Elementary. Do you mind to share a few things with us? Sure, it's a lot of fun to talk about those things. And I would say what we are about here at our school is about building relationships. Um, our staff starts with a relationship with one another. For example, in the last seven days, a staff member brings tomatoes to school and somebody has a fried green tomato sandwich and texts that out late at night. Or somebody goes on vacation to Florida and brings back donuts for someone. Or someone else goes to somewhere and brings a t-shirt back. Those are the kind of relationships we have with our colleagues. And that's just occurred in the last week. Uh, we have those relationships with one another, with our parents, with our families, and with our community. And that's what makes it great to come to work every day. And I couldn't be more proud to work at a place like Van Pelt because of what we value. We value people and we value relationships above all else. Because without relationships, who are we and what do we have at the end of the day? That's why it's a great place to work at Van Pelt. Thank you, Raider. Jennifer Hurt at KPTV, Van Pelt Elementary School. 
We're thrilled today to have with us our nursing coordinator, Darlene Becker, here on KPTV. You know, during the pandemic, the school nurse role changed immensely, and Darlene's group really did a fantastic job of keeping everyone safe and healthy. Darlene, tell us something that you're really proud of that your department has taken care of over the last year. Well, thank you, Dr. Perridge. And uh, for our staff, one of the biggest things was all the contact tracing and determining when students and staff could return to school plus trying to carry on our regular duties as we normally do. Yeah. I would tell you, no other department had a change in their responsibilities as much as your department, and your ladies did a fantastic job of keeping everybody safe and healthy. So thank you very much for your leadership as well. Thank you, and I appreciate your leadership. You were always there, and uh, we appreciate it. All right, thank you. There's a lot of new and exciting things happening at Highland View Elementary School this year. To learn more, here's Gary Ritchie. Hey, Amanda, you're getting a groove on, aren't you? Uh, 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 hey, Mr. Ritchie, hey. Hey, hey. Are, are you ready for the interview? You know, the project uh, that Dr. Perridge and the email that he sent oh, out to you? Oh, no. What interview? You didn't get the email? I don't think so. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, we're, the, we're getting ready to interview, and I'll clue you in on it, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, okay, okay. This is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News, and I'm here today at Highland View Elementary, and I'm interviewing Principal Amanda Chitwood. And Amanda, I would like to hear today, tell us something that you are incredibly proud about Highland View Elementary. Well, I'm new here at Highland View Elementary, but I'm extremely proud of the SOL scores that our students had last year, that there were some large gains made, and we're excited to, to keep that momentum moving forward. Most definitely. Quite an impressive show, for sure. Yes, thank you. So, uh, once again, this is Gary Ritchie with KPTV News, and I'm signing off, sending it back to you. You know, a lot of folks don't know, but the Highlands Juvenile Detention Center falls under the Bristol, Virginia Public Schools umbrella. We're thrilled to have with us today the administrator of the Highlands Juvenile Detention Center, Bo Love. Bo, you all do a lot of great work at the detention center. Won't you tell all of our viewers something that you're proud of from your department last year? Yes, Keith, thanks for having me, first off. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of is uh, that through COVID, um, when other schools and, and other uh, professional educators were having to work virtually from home, uh, whether that be for weeks at a time or even one day a week, uh, at Highlands Juvenile Detention Center, we did not have that option of working virtually. So um, we were able to come to work five days a week um, throughout the, the pandemic and, and as we continue, um, and not because we had to be with our kids, because we get to be with our kids every day. That's awesome. You know, you're, you're, the students you serve have a whole different set of needs than many of our students have, and we appreciate the good work that you guys do. Thank you. All right. You know, the casino has been in the news in Bristol here a lot lately. For our closest school to the casino, Stonewall Jackson, we're here to learn more from our new principal, Josh Stamper. Where is he? Where is Mr. Stamper? My gosh. Okay, wait, wait. I think that's him. Oh my gosh. He looks like a wreck. What? What's he doing? What? What's he? Are those bookie sheets? Has he been at the casino? Golly. He's a wreck. He's been there all night. What in the world? I did not know this about Mr. Stamper. Hmm. Is he okay? Oh, hey. hey, Mr. Hey, Stamper, man. where have you been? Uh, well, I, I, are those actually bookie sheets? No. Yeah, yes. Um, um, so, in principal school, you know, they teach us that. It's really important to build partnerships with community stakeholders. So, just uh, all part of the business of being a principal. Uh, you know. I'm not. Good morning. This is Megan Denabrega with KPTV, live from Stonewall Jackson Elementary, where I'm with Mr. Josh Stamper, the new principal. Mr. Stamper, you good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. 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 Well, we would really love for you to just share with us one of the greatest accomplishments from last year that you're proud of. <sighs> As you know, last year was a great year for Stonewall Jackson and I've got big shoes to fill, but I'm just, 
You good? You good? I'm just so excited to be here and, and to be working with the, the fantastic faculty and staff at Stonewall Jackson. Awesome. Great. I gotta go sit down. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Samper. And we're looking forward to great things at Stonewall Jackson this year. This is Megan Denobrega with KPTV. Back to you in the studio. Wow. What an amazing first news show here at KPTV. I am so glad that I have folks around me who helped to keep me humble and to keep the focus on the main thing. It was so inspiring to hear about all the successes in our different departments and at our different schools. I'm so glad that we made this show about Bristol Virginia Public Schools and not about me. Gary, Meg, and Jennifer, great job reporting. You know, going back to the very beginning of this show, I told a story about my grandson catching lightning bugs. And when I think about all the great successes that our schools and our departments have had over the past year, we overcome some amazing challenges. We overcome all the odds to provide the best education possible that we could to our students, to their families, and to our community. What we showed last year and the year before through COVID is that there is nothing that Bristol Virginia Public Schools can't do. And so this year, as we go into another new school year with new challenges that we've not even thought of, my challenge is to you is to help our students achieve the very best that they can and help all of our students catch all the lightning bugs. This is Keith Perigen, KPTV, signing off.